So here are seven things that we learned from the Buffalo Bills voluntary OTAs, and it's coming right up on today's edition of the Da Mafia Report. Yo, ho, ho, Bills Mafia. Welcome to yet another edition of the Da Mafia Report. As always, your host, Dan Mitchell. Say that you're new here. I'm an avid member of the Bills Mafia, and I regularly put out videos about the Buffalo Bills and the NFL in general. If that's your cup of tea, I highly recommend subscribing to this channel. And as always, smashing the ever-living f*** out of that like button. That's right, guys. We finally ended up seeing our first footage from the Buffalo Bills voluntary OTAs. And so among several interviews with Sean McDermott, Vaughn Miller, Josh Allen, we ended up getting a lot of things cleared up as far as who showed up, uh, what some of the new guys are looking like chemistry-wise, and I'm really excited to dive in to all of these things. Without further ado, let me stop wasting your time. It's the first thing we learned is exactly who decided to show up for voluntary OTAs. Now, let me tell you what, there's a key word in voluntary OTAs, and that just so happens to be voluntary. I would say that so many media moguls freak out when somebody doesn't show up. They start questioning their dedication to the team, off-season workouts. But at the end of the day, guys, don't read too much into this. However, I know that everybody does want to get a good understanding of who shows up and who does not. And then this is the list of who was not present whatsoever. Stephon Diggs, surprise, surprise. Matt Milano, Greg Manx and then Latavius Murray. Some of the players that were there but just were not participating was Vaughn Miller, obviously, due to uh, his still recovery of the ACL, Jordan Poyer, Damar Hamlin, Mitch Morse, and then also Jordan Phillips. Now, like I said, to say, for example, that this was a mandatory sort of workout with the team, then yeah, most definitely, I would be a bit concerned, but I would not even give this a second thought which makes us a great transition into the second thing that we learned today is that the media is absolutely crazy about Stefan Diggs. As you remember, Stefan Diggs was listed on this list of no-shows for OTAs. So many news outlets are starting to fire up rumors, oh, he wants out of Buffalo, he's not happy. And they're going to be showing that clip of him and Josh Allen on the sideline from the playoff game last year. But ladies and gentlemen, Stefan Diggs very rarely very, very rarely shows up to OTAs. Last year, I think he showed up for a day or two during the first week, but for the most part, that was the sole exclusive time. As of right now, last time I checked up on Diggs, it looked like that he was working on a charity event for his own foundation just a couple of days ago, and I'm sure he's handling business by himself. He is an absolute elite receiver, and I have no question in my mind that he will be ready by the time that mandatory training camp commences. So whatever you're doing, please don't be that guy on Twitter that starts raising up all these potential scenarios of him demanding a trade or him not being happy in Buffalo. He is not going anywhere. And on the contrary, Diggs is proud and happy to be a Buffalo Bill. Now, number three is some of the several new faces that were out on the field, particularly working with the offense. On this video that was posted on Twitter just a couple of hours ago, we see Trent Sherfield, we see Deontay Hardy, we see Justin Shorter, who a lot of people are very excited about, hoping that he'll be able to have a very large role into this offense. And it's always good to see all of these new free agents and rookies alike being able to mesh with this team. And this is their very first opportunity. This is essentially their tryout to make that final 53-man roster. And yes, I do understand that these workouts are in shorts, no pads, t-shirts, but from what I saw so far, seems like that they're fitting in very well. And it's gonna be a very difficult decision to figure out who makes this final roster it's by the time the regular season does begin. So, oh no, Dan, not another ad read. Trust me, you are going to thank me for this. Now, as many of you know, I work extremely, extremely long hours, 7 a.m. until I about pass out at a 11 or midnight Monday through Friday, and you would think that I would be able to go to sleep and rejuvenate. You're absolutely wrong. My mind is still going a million miles a second, and for the most part, I'm staring at my ceiling until 3 a.m. Now, that is something that I have accepted for myself, but I needed to make a change. I needed to start taking naps, but once again, I can't nap either. Whether or not that it's my FOMO, or whether or not that I just can't get comfortable enough, or it's too bright, I have had no such luck until I ended up finding the Monta sleep mask. Now, little do you know, Monta truly believes sleep needs to be the number one priority in order to achieve 
that particular level of success. Now these things are ridiculously comfortable and literally the second that you put it on, you feel like you're right next to Aaron Rodgers during one of his darkness retreats. I mean, look at this, literally can't see shit. And so you know what? I should probably apply to officiate in the NFL. Prerequisites right here. Now Monta has several selections on their website. This particular is the Sleep Mask Pro. It's this company and this mask has really been able to help me prioritize what is most important and that is my sleep so I can keep on giving you that juicy content, baby. So whatever you're doing, go to that link in my bio and make sure you put in the code DONMAFIA and they're gonna give you an extra 10% off your first order. Trust me. You will not regret this. Night, night, bitches. This fourth thing that we learned is Dorian Williams, our linebacker that we ended up drafting in the third round of the NFL draft just about a month ago, has been stated to be taking some reps at the middle linebacker position. Now, this is certainly interesting because on the depth chart, he has always been an outside linebacker on the opposite side of Matt Milano in college. However, when you look at the rest of our depth chart, when we have only AJ Klein at middle linebacker and then Terrell Dotson, I think that this is going to be something to watch out for because with Edmonds being gone, those are some pretty large shoes to fill. And nobody on this roster, especially AJ Klein, Dotson, or even Dorian Williams is going to fill that at least this year. But I am so happy to see that he is being moved around and not just married to that position that he played in college throughout his career. Yes, he is a little undersized, but he is an absolute elite tackler. And then also he is great in pass coverage. So I'm really excited to see how the rest of his workouts go and even during the preseason so he can solidify that tryout. This fifth thing we learned is speaking of transitions, Christian Benford, although is listed as a cornerback and has been working as a cornerback. Bill's secondary coach, John Butler, said that he has all of the intangibles and football IQ to be able to play the safety position. Now, this is very interesting because this has been a very hot topic amongst Bill's fans throughout the past year since Benford has been on this team of, hey, why don't we just switch Benford over to the safety position? He's got the size, he's got the smarts, and we think he would make a great safety for this team, especially in a department where we're lacking some pretty significant depth. I do understand that we ended up picking up Taylor Rapp, who I think was a great pickup, but outside of that, it's pretty slim, especially since McDermott today said that he's not comfortable enough to answer when Tamar Hamlin would be able to A, play, and then B, even be able to participate in practice. Now with Christian Benford moving over to safety, this wouldn't have been the first time that this has ever happened. Just a couple of years ago, Aaron Williams, who played for the Buffalo Bills for a considerable amount of time, he started off as a cornerback and then switched into safety after just a couple of years and did wonderfully. So hopefully we'll be able to see that exact same transition from our guy, Christian Benford. Is that Sean McDermott took the stage today and said that he has never seen Josh Allen look more focused in his life. Now, several of you are probably just saying, Dan, that's just pure coach speak, okay? This is the boilerplate responses that just about every single head coach in the NFL is going to give the media. And I was a part of that mindset as well until I started seeing some of the highlights from practice today on Twitter just a couple of minutes ago. This guy looks poised, his accuracy is there, he is making more and more chemistry with these new additions, and hands down, the sexiest thing I have seen all day was these highlights of Josh Allen and Dalton Kincaid developing that massive, massive chemistry that is so important going on into this season. I really need Dalton Kincaid to be a day one contributor from the beginning, and I hope that Sean McDermott has stepped away from hating rookies and not making this guy go through all the trials and tribulations until week seven and week eight and put that man out there because he is our best opportunity hands down that we have coming out of the slot. And last but not least, seventh thing that we learned today was although that Vaughn Miller was not participating in practice, he was there. Something that I think a lot of Bills fans should appreciate. That's just pure leadership. That's being out there, sort of serving as a coach, observing, showing the team that he wants to be there. But the biggest piece of news that came from the Vaughn Miller camp is, is that he is telling everybody that he is starting to slowly but surely run and gain that strength in his knee. And although he wasn't able to give a firm timeline on when he is able to return, he did guarantee that it will not be past week six. And that is absolutely amazing because after week six, we have some pretty heavy hitter opponents 
that we will without a doubt need Von Miller for. So Bills Mafia, that's gonna have to do it today from the seven things that we learned from OTAs. Do me a favor, sound off in the comments and let me know your thoughts. By the time that you're seeing this video, I will more than likely be live. Every single Monday through Friday, I am hosting this thing called Bills Mafia Happy Hour where we discuss all of the news, rumors, etc. on a live stream. The show is entirely about you at 5 p.m. EST. If that's your cup of tea, please join me. I will be live at 5 p.m. I will be live right on this channel and I hope nothing but the best. Thank you so much for tuning in. And before I let you go, you better always remember, let's go Buffalo.